Hey guys, we are in the lab today looking at how you separate out mixtures and solutions, looking at how copper sulfate crystals are made. Do you think I overdid the blue today? Here I have a beaker which has sulfuric acid in it and I'm just heating it up. All of this smoke you can see coming around the outside, that isn't sulfuric acid, that is just um, stuff burning on the gauze. And what I'm going to do is mix in some copper oxide, spatula by spatula, mixing it as I go. And what I want you to watch is the colour. When the sulfuric acid gets to the point where it's almost boiling, so hot but not actually boiling, you can turn off the Bunsen burner and start adding in your copper sulfate. You need to be really careful when you're heating your sulfuric acid because it's acid and you're heating it. So the last thing we want is a hot acid being spilt anywhere or spitting out of the beaker and getting into people's eyes. So please be really, really careful when you do this and follow all safety precautions that your teacher has told you about. So you can see these tiny little bubbles coming up and this is the point to stop it. Now we have our hot sulfuric acid. I'm going to add in the copper oxide, spatula by spatula, stirring it. Now, when you're stirring it here, you need to be really careful that you don't tip the um, beaker off because then you'll be spilling hot acid everywhere. Alternatively, ask your teacher if you can do this. You might be able to pick it up with some rubber fingers um, and then put it on the side. So I'm just going to add in the copper oxide, spatula by spatula for stir it and what I wanted to do is just watch what happens. Now there was a gas given off there, reaction, you can see it was fizzy. Do not breathe this in, it is not nice stuff. Stand back when you're doing this and have the windows open. So just give that a bit of a stir to make sure it's all mixed up. Remember this is hot, it is giving off not very nice gas at all. So be really careful when you're doing that. You want to add in a fair few spatulas of copper oxide because we do want a lot of reaction to be happening here. Give that a bit of stir to get the lumps of copper oxide off the top. So you might be able to see a hint of um, what is going on. One more. Nice one there, stir it around. Make sure all of the little, they are kind of like little islands of copper sitting on the top. Make sure they are all um, mixed up with the sulfuric acid. And what we've made here is a mixture of all kind of like gunky stuff. A reaction is taking place as well. And I'll show that to you, um, what we get out in just a bit. Then we need to filter the mixture. So I've got my funnel, I've got my filter paper and my conical flask, and we need to fold the filter paper so that everything will go through. Now there are two different ways you can fold filter paper. You can fold it in half and in half again, and then just take one of the separations and then just give that a bit of a squidge, technical term, pop that in there, and then you've got your filter. The other way you can do it is getting your piece of filter paper, folding it in half, in half again, in half again, and in half again, separating that all out and then putting that in your funnel. The advantage of doing it this way is that um, there's not gonna be a massive chunk of paper for stuff to filter through, so this is actually gonna happen faster. So now I'm gonna pour my mixture here through the filter funnel to separate out the solid from the liquid. You need to be really careful when you do this, do this slowly because it is hot and you just don't want everything to spill over the edge. Now watch really carefully for the colour that is coming through at the bottom. Remember, we mixed black powder with clear sulfuric acid. And I really like this experiment because it comes out with such a lovely surprise when the solution at the bottom comes out blue. Now 
This experiment does take quite a while to filter through, but a large part of chemistry is all about patience. And I find it really quite relaxing just sitting here watching the drops go through. Do not be tempted to poke it with a spatula to try and make it go through faster. All that would do is poke a hole in your filter paper, then you'll get black powder down here where we do not want black powder and you'll just have to start again. So patience is the name of the game here. After a while, what you can see is that we have a clear solution down here, and then in the top here is all the leftover solid that we have separated out. So we've separated out the mixture. We've separated out the clear solution from the solid powder. What we have here is an evaporating basin, and I'm just gonna pour the solution that we've just separated out into the evaporating basin, heat it gently from below, and we will see crystals forming. These are really quite beautiful. Now, depending on how long the crystals take to form, they will be different sizes. So, what the example suggests that you do is to evaporate off half water and let it form slowly um, over 24 hours on the side. Now, obviously, this is going to depend on the time of year that you do it in. Whenever I do this experiment in the winter, um, it takes a really long time for crystals to form um, and they form beautiful beautiful, beautiful large crystals. Whenever I do this in the summer, the crystals form very, very quickly. So in the essence of speeding things up for time here, I'm just gonna evaporate off all the water so you can see what's happening. So what you can see here are tiny, beautiful blue crystals of copper sulfate. Now, because this was heated so quickly, these are really, really small. And if you look closely, you can see these blue crystals, and then just above them, you can see some white crystals. This is the difference between anhydrous and hydrated copper sulfate. The anhydrous without water is white, whereas the hydrated, the hydrous copper sulfate is blue. That means with water. What I'm gonna do now is rehydrate all of this, and then I'm gonna put it on the side, leave the water to evaporate over a long period of time, and then hopefully we should get some beautiful large crystals for you to have a look at. This is a lovely experiment to do in class, but just be really, really careful when you're evaporating things off because it could start to spit. The best thing to do is to just leave it on the side and always follow your teacher's instructions.